This week, finally, after almost five years, there had been the bridge restored between the occupied uh, Luhansk region. We can see it on the map. That is a bridge in Stanitsa Luhanska, and it happens to be the only crossing point in the Luhansk region. Uh, so far, the cars couldn't go, so it was just the uh, ones for those who were crossing without the cars. Uh, that was the initiative, we can say, from the new Ukrainian government uh, after the re-election of the President Zelensky. It had been promised in July uh, and in June to be built within summer, yet it taken longer. Of course, uh, the bridge had been destroyed in uh, March 2015. Since then, there were numerous negotiations. The Ukrainian side didn't really uh, very and the, and the separatists didn't very much agree on the how uh, on the width of the bridge. Uh, so that was a huge discussions, but there was a huge also the problems for the local populations. We see that the president Zelensky traveled to the opening of the bridge. There were also a number of the foreign diplomats, um, and we also can uh, look at the short report uh, from our correspondent from Stanitsa Luhansk. On this side of the new bridge in Stanitsa Luhanska, people are waiting for the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, to open the bridge. There are dozens of representatives of Ukrainian and international media. On the other side, there are Russian and Luhansk media representatives, as well as the so-called foreign minister of the so-called Luhansk People's Republic. It appears to me that the officials of Ukraine and the unrecognized republic have never been this close to each other. I think this bridge is a very significant mission that shows that we don't just want to do things, we actually do them. We saw some unnecessary flags when we got here. Ukraine has nothing to do with this, but I think it will be our task for the near future to remove them and to build a new, normal, modern road of the same quality as the Mariupol Zaporizhia road. We have with us on Skype Stefan Sionan, which, who is the French journalist from Le Figaro here in Ukraine. Uh, Stefan, good to hear from you. Do you I hear us? Yeah, I can hear you very good. So, uh, Stefan, uh, as I understand, you've been to the uh, Stanitsa when there was this opening, but also spent some days after the officials left, So, which is the most important moment to understand. Um, so explain us and our audience, um, how important is that, what people think, uh, and whether it matters or why it matters, if so. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was very important for the people. I mean, I've been uh, heading in a rush to, to Stanitsa Luganska because the journalists have been um, announced in, in a pretty short notice that the bridge will be inaugurated. And I took the last train to, Zil to Lizichansk to, to get to Donbass. And actually, uh, I'd like to underline something. The journalists were not as numerous as uh, the report is pretending because there were Clearly, Ukrainian journalists were covering such kind of uh, events, but I think I was the only foreign journalist who managed to, to, to get there, just because it was something organized in last minute. And when I arrived in Lizichansk, I took the first marshal car to, uh, to go to Stanitsa Luganska, and the people didn't have really clear information. There were some rumors in the bus that Zelensky was coming, so it was pretty exciting for the people, but even on the spot, at the bus station of uh, Stanitsa Luganska, which is just behind the bridge, people were not very well informed that the president was coming. Just the novel started to spread in the beginning of the afternoon. And of course, the, the news that the, the bridge will be open started to, to spread among the people traveling between the two, uh, the two zones, between the LNR and between Ukrainian territories. So, as I understand also that the, uh, they opened it a few days earlier than they planned, and we probably need to explain that there was restored bridge uh, for, not for the cars early in this summer, and this is the bridge for the cars. But besides, you know, the moment of the opening, um, can you also explain why, how people reacted on that? Besides, of course, it's a good thing, you know, you can't really challenge that. Uh, but what it matters, because also we, we can find it highly symbolic, there were from the other sides, the the separatist it uh, was just few meters uh, you know some dozens of meters between the the separatists and the ukrainian officials as well the foreign uh, diplomats 
Yeah, I think the bridge has been finished in a rush because uh, just two days before the opening, I heard from very good sources on the ground that still 10, 15 meters had to be repaired. You have to know that the, dam the most damaged part of the bridge was from the Ukrainian side of the bridge. The structure from the separatist side on the other side of the bridge is kind of pretty stable from what we can see from drone images from, from the sky or even from the Ukrainian side. Um, the situation was like this. I mean, during four or five years, it was very difficult to cross the line between separatist-controlled territories and Ukrainian-controlled territories. You have to imagine that according to the local administration, every day between 10,000 and 15,000 people cross from one side to another. Most of those people are elderly people, are pensioners, most of them living in Lugansk territories and coming to the Ukrainian side, either for little businesses or to get their pensions on the Ukrainian side. But between 10 and 15,000 people a day, that's very important. And there were real questions of security because during the previous month, and yours, many people has, have been falling on those provisory stairs. The question of the weather, it was very disturbing. So what has been done actually in the past days and weeks, the bridge has been repaired, but it, it's a very, very tiny bridge. Only one car can cross this bridge. Two cars cannot cross each other. So basically it's a pedestrian bridge, but in case it's uh, it's it's important to do it, um, some one car or one bus can cross. So all the people we've been meeting during this day think it's very important because it will increase the security for the people crossing on a daily basis. And uh, Stefan, uh, to be assured, of course now all the discussions, for instance, there would be the meeting in the, uh, in the Paris between the President Zelensky and the President Putin. So far we know that with the President of the German and French leaders. There are all these uh, quite uh, emotional discussions over the troops' withdrawal. How it's all seen on the ground, you know, in, when you stayed with the, with the people there, just on the contact line? So from the diplomatic side, it was clearly uh, a peer operation of confidence building. The fact that the German ambassador and the French ambassador were siding very close to, to Zelensky was a sign that France and Germany wanted to back the president in this action. But also, the, Germany and France need to show some deliveries. G Germany and France have been very active, very proactive in the past three months to organize this meeting between Putin and Zelensky. On the same day, uh, Zelensky um, received on the as of sea in Ochakiv, the boats which have been uh, returned by Russia. So this is clearly a politic of small steps to, to build confidence before the meeting of the 9th of uh, December. Now, from the side of the population, it's something a little bit different. People are waiting to know what's going to happen. And one of the main reasons, and I've been really struck by this, it's something I knew, but, um, but after five years, Ukrainian media have no access in Stanitsa Luganska. I stayed overnight in Stanitsa Luganska. In the place I was sleeping in, there were 10 televisions on the TV. And there was not a single Ukrainian television. To get some information about what happened during that day in this very important city, I had to watch the first Russian television, and a television called Lugansk 24. It's a copycat of uh, Russia 24. And of course, those media were giving biased information to the people who were only watching this. And I understood that in Stanitsa Luganska, most of the people who watch the TV watch Russian news. Just young people take their news from internet. So they are basically a little bit more balanced than their parents and grandparents. But people are still waiting, in a waiting position, because they still don't know what's going to come next. And last thing that I'd like to mention, um, Stanitsa Luganska is a place of disengagement. But a few days before uh, the inauguration of the bridge, eight kilometers away from the beach, from, from the bridge, um, a Russian drone launched some explosive grenades on military positions of the Ukrainian army, wounded uh, an Ukrainian soldier. So there are the disengagement positions in Stanitsa, in Zolote, in Petrivske, but it doesn't mean that the fights are stopping five or ten kilometers away from those positions. 
Thanks a lot. That was Stefan Sionan, who is the correspondent of the Le Figaro here in Ukraine.